did a literature review and we found 25 articles on the fluctuation properties of cloth and cloth masks. And what we found was really interesting. We found that uh, cloth does have clinically useful, potentially clinically useful um, abilities to filter particles. And uh, that's what we have summarized and reported here. Uh, my name is Catherine Clace. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Medicine at McMaster University and in the Department of um, HEI. Hello, my name is Edward Fu. I'm the EPC student at the Department of Clinical Epidemiology, Leiden University Medical Center, the Netherlands. And together with Dr. Catherine Clays, uh, we are here to uh, discuss the findings of our review entitled Forgotten Technology in the COVID-19 Pandemic, Filtration Properties of Cloth and Cloth Masks, a narrative review, which is now published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We are part of a group of uh, international epidemiologists. We normally work on uh, kidney epidemiology. Um, in this paper, we're joined by an aerosol scientist and uh, virologist. So we found that uh, cloth and cloth masks provide clinically useful levels of filtration. And it may seem counterintuitive that woven cloth with spaces between the threads that are even visible to the naked eye can block fine particles like viruses. However, viruses are not transmitted as isolated particles, uh, but rather in respiratory secretions, and these have a range of sizes. So these respiratory secretions are much larger than um, viruses and can be filtered even by cloth and cloth masks. And even single layers block some particles, uh, but multiple layers certainly perform better. So it's difficult to summarize these studies in uh, single simple numbers uh, because we found a lot of different studies of different kinds. Some of the studies are of flat cloth and those studies have been quite widely reported in the lay press. And um, some of those studies are the studies that uh, we use to suggest uh, the use of cotton um, materials for uh, cloth masks. And then even more interesting and more practical are the studies of actual masks. So we found some studies of cloth masks from the 1960s and 1970s. Now in the 60s and 70s, cloth masks were the standard for surgical masks and for infection control uh, in hospitals. Uh, the disposable masks that we have today hadn't been invented yet. And there were rigorous studies done to look at their performance. And what we found was uh, that there were two studies of two particular cloth masks, one of them a cotton flannel mask and the other a four layer muslin mask. Uh, and they both showed that uh, the cotton masks were really excellent at providing source control and preventing um, mouth secretions from reaching the environment. So are these studies with viruses? No, they're not. They're studies that used a bacterial surrogate for the um, estimation of the percentage uh, transmission. Um, but we think that these are very valid studies in terms of what we're likely to see with source control with an excellent well-constructed mask in 2020. There are also studies that uh, though they don't, uh, they're not conducted according to uh, the standards of modern mask making, they are conducted using uh, aerosol technology and measuring particle sizes. And for example, for that four layer muslin mask, what we found was that uh, looking at all bacteria reaching the environment in particles of all sizes, the reduction was 99%. And then when you fractionate that and you look at the fine particles, which are often called aerosols, um, when you look at those smaller particles, even then the, the uh, reduction in what was actually reaching the environment was 90%. So we think that that is uh, very important information and really should improve people's confidence that when they wear a mask, as people say, uh, your mask protects me, my mask protects you. So that's the source control piece. And I think that that has um, been quite widely reported um, in the literature, though the particular studies from the 60s and 70s um, that uh, we are quoting. We have not seen those uh, appear in the, uh, in the lay press and we really uh, wish to promote this work and make that um, accessible to people in 2020. 
The next question is whether wearing a cloth mask protects the wearer. And uh, that is uh, a more challenging question. Uh, however, when we completed our review, we found that there were actually four studies on this question and they all do use um, modern methods. They use what's called portacam technology and they um, allow us to assess the proportion of particles that are reaching the wearer across the mask and around the mask. And what those studies show is that for fine particles, the reduction in uh, what's reaching the wearer in three studies um, of simple cloth masks was around 50%. Now, if fine particles are reduced by 50%, then larger particles will generally be reduced by much more than that. And what that means is that uh, we may have a 50% protection uh, when it comes to actually wearing a cloth mask that's constructed of woven cotton in um, two or more layers. So we think that that's really important information. So there's more information about some fabrics than others. And most of the evidence is centered on woven cotton. Um, muslin, which is a type of unfinished cotton, uh, cotton and flannel are the best supported and are our suggestions for evidence-informed cloth masks. Uh, use multiple layers of the same material or combine, uh, for example, cotton with flannel. Uh, use at least two layers, but three or four layers are, are almost certainly better. Um, so in summary, we would recommend two to four layers of woven cotton with 100 to 150 threads per inch. Um, there's a trade-off with increased layers. Although they provide better filtration efficiency, they can also increase uh, the resistance to breathing, which may lead to discomfort and even not wanting to wear the mask. And uh, increased resistance with increased layers also leads to increased leak around the edges, uh, decreasing the efficiency of the mask. So you may want to find a cloth mask that is comfortable and well-fitting and importantly covers your nose uh, to below your chin. We have put a plain language summary of our study on uh, www.clothmasks.ca and it contains some easy instructions on making, wearing and cleaning cloth masks. Of course, there's no randomized control trial that shows that wearing a cloth mask prevents transmission of uh, COVID-19. In fact, there are no randomized control trials showing that wearing cloth masks in the community prevents transmission of any virus. But what we do have is uh, observational evidence specific to coronaviruses showing that uh, wearing masks prevents infection. And there are a small number of studies in that meta-analysis, which was conducted by uh, Chu and my colleagues here at McMaster. There are a small uh, number of studies in that meta-analysis that were based in the community. Uh, we also want to emphasize that using cloth masks is no substitute for the other measures. Importantly, do not go out if you're sick. Um, observe physical distancing and observe uh, hand hygiene. The other thing we want to point out is the importance of kindness uh, through everything in this pandemic and to avoid judgment on those who are not wearing masks and those who are wearing masks and recognize that everybody's individual personal circumstances and health conditions uh, are unique and private. The importance of this to uh, patients with um, chronic diseases is um, that they can uh, achieve a measure of protection for themselves by wearing a mask in the environment, uh, particularly when they're out in the community, particularly in settings where physical distancing may be compromised. But it's really an important message for everybody in the community that we can all protect each other and uh, reduce that uh, transmission uh, number, the R number that we were so focused on back in April and May. We can reduce that number by using this as an adjunct to our other measures. What are the next steps for this research? Well, we are hoping to obtain more data on the filtration properties of cloth and to be able to uh, produce uh, better information uh, for uh, the public and for people who are making masks. And uh, at, here at McMaster, we have a newly formed center of excellence in protective equipment and materials. And uh, engineers at the center are um, working on obtaining funding to test cloth uh, even now. 
So finally, we just want to mention uh, clothmasks.ca again as a source of uh, plain language uh, information on how to uh, make, wear and clean your cloth mask. Thanks very much for listening. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.